In this video, we're going to talk about the acidity of alcohols and how would you rank them, right? And some of the components that play a key role in the acidity of alcohols. So what if, um, what if I was supposed to tell you that this cyclohexanol, this has a pKa of 18, right? This phenol here. its pKa is 10. Now remember, from general chemistry, the lower the pKa, the more acidic the molecule is, right? So kind of pause this video and kind of answer this question that I proposed to you. Which one of these molecules do you think will be the stronger acid? And to find out, or more acidic, right? Or which, which one of these molecules are more acidic? So kind of pause this video and kind of think of why. And the answer is to find out, we got to draw the conjugate base of each, right? So you could imagine if I have this cyclohexanol here and I react it with some base of some sort, right? I'm going to deprotonate, I'm going to deprotonate that oxygen, right? And I'm going to get an oxygen with a negatively charge, right? Plus the base bonded to the hydrogen. Now, how about the other one? How about this phenol here? All right. What if I were to take a strong base and pronate this one? What would happen? We would get an oxygen that's negatively charged. But look, we could actually take this, flip it in here, and then keep these electrons here. If we get a resonance stabilized molecule, and that's not the only resonance structure we could draw. We'd actually we could actually draw something of this nature also. Right? Now we have a double bond under oxygen. We have a, we have a negatively charged um, carbon, and we could take this, flip this in, kind of kick these electrons out. And we got another resonance structure, and also there's another resonance structure and another we could go around the molecule. So it turns out that this is more acidic because of how it's resonance stabilized. This cannot participate in the re any resonance at all. So here's the takeaway from this oh, kind of lesson here. When the molecule is more resonance stabilized, it's more acidic. So resonance has a big part, hyperconjugation. Right, hyperconjugation, right? And you also have something that's called induction. And you, these are the more common things you'll kind of run across when we talk about the acidity of alcohols, right? So what if I were to give you this sequence and ask you to rank the alcohols, these alcohols in terms of which one is more acidic? And remember, when we talk about acidity of alcohols, we talk about how easy it is for you to kind of take one of those hydrogens off to form that conjugate base, right? How easy is it? How easy, right? And we're gonna kind of make kind of logical sense out of what's really going on here. Right? So what if I were to give you these four molecules and you say, okay, well, rank these alcohols with number one being the most stable And number four being the worst. Which which so number four being the worst. So let's start from number four. Which one is the worst alcohol? And you could kind of pause this video for for your practice. So let's kind of reason through it. This is actually a worst alcohol, right? And the reason being is that there's no first of all there's no electronegative atom on this, um, on the carbon connecting the alcohol. So you could imagine there is no kind of uh, electron withdrawing density from this oxygen here. So the oxygen is, just, there's nothing kind of, kind of withdrawing the electrons away from this oxygen. So the oxygen is just literally, just there stable, keeping this hydrogen kind of very hard. So this is actually will be the number four. This is actually the worst, this is the worst, right? Now, which one would come after that, right? 
it would be this one. And the reason being is that notice that we have an electronegative atom um, in this molecule here. But notice the distance away from the alcohol, right? The, and, and this is what we talk about induction. This has to do with induction, right? So the more closer the electronegative atom here is to the alcohol, the more acidic. And it should make sense because you could imagine, yes, we have an electronegative atom, but it's, but it's really not doing anything because it can't really withdraw any electrons away from the oxygen because it's so far away from the oxygen. And this is what we mean by induction, which is what we spoke about here, right? So here's the takeaway. The closer the electronegative atom is to the alcohol itself or that OH group, the more easier it is to pull off on those, uh, pull off that, to deprotonate that alcohol. Because again, it's closer, which means that it has more effect kind of withdrawing those electron density away from the alcohol. So this is, this would also not be a good alcohol in terms of stability because induction wise, the fluorine, the electronegative atom is just simply too far away from the alcohol. Now we have a toss up between these two now to be which one would be more stable or the more acidic, right? So this will get number two. Oh, I kind of forget. <laughs> I kind of forget this should be an OH here. Sorry about that. Um, but this will be number two. And obviously this would take number one. Now analyze which one will take number one and let's analyze why this is not more acidic than this. Notice that we have the electronegative atoms on the same carbon, right? But what also um, takes place is this idea of hyperconjugation. Now we looked at induction in terms of how far away um, those electronegative atoms are, for, are, are from the actual OH group. And now we're gonna look at hyperconjugation. You could imagine this fluorine is kind of withdrawing these electron density away from the oxygen, kind of withdrawing these electron density away from the oxygen, right? So this is very, this is actually very acidic. But it turns out that if you increase the number of electronegative atom, uh, kind of close to that OH group, that also has a, you know, very large effect on the acidity of the molecule. Because you could imagine, here there's only one fluorine kind of hogging those electrons. Here we have two. Right, so these electrons are just—they're out of control, right? And you can see we could have, we could even had three three there, right? So again, the number of electronegative atoms also matter, all right? So you can imagine those two fluorines are kind of pulling electron density away, and that's very strong because you have two electronegative atoms, and this is what we mean by hyperconjugation. Induction is just you know kind of how close. Um, those electronegative atoms are um, to your actual OH group in terms of position. Uh, when we talk about hyperconjugation, it's the direct electron uh, withdrawing density from that, the OH group itself. And so this is why this would actually be the more stable or the more acidic molecule because, because again, you could imagine, well, not this, I'm sorry, but the, <laughs> this, right? Um, you could imagine when you kind of deprotonate that that alcohol, you have a negative um, oxygen there, um, and it so happens that this this um, conjugate base is much more stable than this because of the fact that there's two electronegative atoms versus one. 